Is Alexis Sanchez coming to Nottingham Forest? That is the question. We will give you the definitive answer in just a second. Welcome to your Forest Transfer News. Good morning, good evening, or good night, wherever in the world you are. Whatever time of day you're watching this, hope you're having a fantastic day. And welcome to your latest Nottingham Forest transfer news, where there is plenty to talk about. We've got the latest on the Dean Henderson deal. We will let you know, is he or isn't he for sure coming to Nottingham Forest with Sanchez? And we have a Brazilian, yet another wonder kid linked. And this one is really exciting. Before we get into it all, please don't forget to hit that like button. Subscribe to Forest Fan TV if you are new. And don't forget, Forest will be playing Leeds tonight. We'll have the watch along live for you from 7.30 p.m. Get the last few tickets on Awani. Get your podcast tickets as well. The links are all in the description. Let's jump into this. Okay, let's start with the Hendo story. And as we told you yesterday, Forrest were looking to broker a loan with an obligation to buy deal. And that seems to be now very much on the tables. And this tells you a lot about what's going on in this transfer window. So let me just give you the deal structure currently as we understand it to be. Forrest will be doing a loan for the next year. Then it will be a fee of around 20 to 25 million and that basically pushes the money into next year's problem, if you like. So, Dean Henderson, obviously very keen on the move to Forest, completely unwanted by not just Man United, but by their fan base, fully wanted by Nottingham Forest. So this one looks like it's edging ever, ever closer to happening. However, it does tell you a few things. One, how much money have we actually got? Because if Forrest are pushing these deals down the road and they already know they want Dean Henderson, the only reason this is going down the road is one of two reasons. Reason number one, which is what I think it is, is monetary reasons. Forrest are definitely, it feels, getting close to that borderline of FFP and the books do need to be balanced. So in a way, this is showing some responsibility from Forrest to make sure that there are no sanctions in place, etc. Now, we all know there are loopholes of getting around FFP and getting yourself out of it. Look at Man City, look at Everton, so many clubs you could name. But at the same time, there is a, a degree of having to respect the rules. And it's good to see that Forrest are trying to do that. It also shows that there isn't a haphazard approach to recruitment this season. Where last season, and I think we had a good, well, two good transfer windows, although we signed a lot of players, you could tell it was more to fill out a squad and build that foundation, the, uh, you know, the essence of a Premier League squad. And then you pick the fruit that you want to keep and you chuck off the, the, uh, the soured, gone off ones. So that's what's happening currently. But there have been some stupid recruitments in it. You could argue, had Forrest not signed Chris Wood, and Shelby, last season, there's your 25 million that could have gone straight to Henderson, and Henderson would have been a Forest player at the end of the, by the end of this window. The other problem this loan deal brings is that Hendo will be tied against his parent club in the league, unless there's a clause agreed in the contract that he can play for Manchester United. Now, I do feel this might, this might actually happen because technically this is a kick the can down the road kind of deal. But with Manchester United being Manchester United, they will probably fight back against it. Why? Because we saw this in the Carabao Cup last season where Forrest did request permission for Henderson to play against Manchester United because it wasn't an actual league game. Now, I don't expect him to play for Forest against Manchester United, and that does annoy me, but that's another problem um, that comes with part of this deal. The third issue, even though I said there's two, there's three, the third issue is the fact that he is still not fully fit. And is this playing into Forest's mind? Well, you can't really say it is because basically a loan with an obligation means you're going to do the deal, obviously. So I don't think they're too worried about the injury. My worry is, is he going to be fit in time for the start of the season? And if he's not, who's deputizing? Shelby looks good, but still very young. Hennessy basically plays goalkeeping in slow motion. 
And you got Horvath, who I don't think is probably going to stay at Nottingham Forest. He's got his own aspirations. And I think he thinks he's the number one keeper. So I do probably expect him to move on somewhere or maybe go out on loan. So there is some issues and worries with this deal. But overall, who do I think won in this deal? I don't know. I don't know. I think if the fee is around the 25 mil, we paid too much. I say that because literally no other club has been interested in Dean Henderson. Whether that's because his agent has kind of said to any clubs that have called, he wants Forest, Forest is happening, etc. Or because there's worry about his injuries, or there's not that many clubs looking for goalkeepers currently. So with all that, but whatever the reason is, Forest were the only ones in the market and could have pushed down a lower price. So I would still hope and like to see this deal being a max of 20. The perfect sweet spot for me would be 15, 15 million plus five in add-ons. Because there are a lot of keepers, regardless how you feel about Henderson. There are sufficient goalkeepers who are proficient enough in their position that Forrest could have picked up for eight to 10 million. But what you get with Henderson is a couple of bonus things. One, he's English. Secondly, he's homegrown. Thirdly, he's still in his mid-20s. Fourthly, he knows the club, he knows the team, he knows everything that's going on at Nottingham Forest. And fifthly, he has leadership traits. So it is a good package that you get with Henderson. But I still feel because Forest were the only ones on the table, they should have really pulled Manchester United's pants down more. And I don't feel they did. So I think everyone will walk away from this deal quite happy and no one will think they got one over the other. Or if they do, each person will think, Forrest will think, we did a good bit of business here, we've kicked the can down the road. And Manchester United will think, finally, we got rid of Henderson, who seems to hate us. So overall, I'd be very happy once this is completed. It's not confirmed yet, but this is the story that's going on with it. We'll keep you posted as soon as it's confirmed, as always, here on Forest Fan TV. But let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Who got the better part of the deal here? Was it Man United or was it Forrest? I'll end with this on this section. I think Dean Henderson's ended up with the best deal because he's left that scum and he's coming to the proper Reds team. Okay, let's move on to the fun story. That's Sanchez. And is he or is he not coming to Nottingham Forest? These rumors started yesterday on social media and gathered a lot of pace. And then certain individuals did tweet it out today saying that Sanchez is deal done and confirmed with a one plus one year deal to Nottingham Forest. And that got the social media platforms absolutely on fire. We can tell you right now, categorically, with 1 million percent certainty, that this is a billion percent fake news. Sanchez will not be coming to Nottingham Forest. End of finito, kaput, put that one down in bed. Quote me on it if you want. This is all fake news. We're not interested in him. As I was saying yesterday, he doesn't even fit into the team. He would literally come in as a virus, as we saw at Manchester United. He's a Jesse Lingard 2.0. Might as well call him Jesse Sanchez. Seriously, that's how I feel about him. Now, what's interesting is what you guys were saying in the comments yesterday. A lot of you were very excited about this, saying, oh, look at his goal-scoring record at Marseille. He still got it. He would score in the Premier League, etc. Not buying it, guys. Not buying it. I don't see it. I see him as looking for a paycheck. That's all I see from him. But it would have, had they signed Sanchez, it would have shown yet again we are looking in that free to cheaper market because, again, financial fair play. But the bottom line is... Don't worry about this one. If you were worried, if you were excited about it, stop being excited. It's not happening. Sanchez will not be at Nottingham Forest. How do you guys feel about that? Were you excited or were you not? Would you have liked to seen him at the city ground or not? Honestly, I don't want to see us recruiting these retirement home players. We've had too many of those, especially in the last transfer window. Chris Wood coming in, Shelby, IU. I mean, some of you say, yeah, what about Felipe? Look at him. Does he look like he's in a retirement home? Have you seen his physique? Have you seen his man button? Well, the man button's gone. But it's very rare you're going to get a gem who is in his late 30s, who's coming back or hasn't played in the Premier League and isn't going to struggle with the pace of the league. 
So that's why I'm so anti and so ageist when it comes to players, especially in their mid to late 30s. So I'm really happy about this news on Sanchez. But again, let me confirm, this is fake, fake, fake news and will not be happening. Get your thoughts in down below. Let's talk about another exciting link to Nottingham Forest. And this is a quote unquote, another Brazilian wonder kid in Marcos Leonardo, who plays for Santos currently, has 14 goals in about 29 appearances, saved them from relegation, carried them, some may say, on his back at the tender age of 20. And Nottingham Forest are being linked with him. For around, it would be something around, say, 15 million, something along those lines. And this guy would work really well for Nottingham Forest. Why? Because he works well in small spaces. He's able to play off both feet, left or right. He's able to put off shots in tightly marked boxes, know when to hold the ball, know when to just hit it straight away. He's a box kind of striker, a fox in the box, the old school saying. That's what you get with him. And he would work at Nottingham Forest. Problem is, you're not going to get too much out of him in the build-up. Imagine him as, I'm not saying he's anything like Haaland, but that kind of player, the player who's just going to be in the box to put it in the net. And what would that do? That would give Forrest a focal point. Now, I'm not saying he's the finished article by any stretch of the imagination. Taiwo would obviously still be ahead of him in the hierarchy, but he would be one at 20 years old, raw and still plenty of room to grow into. There are not that many clubs interested in him, surprisingly enough. In fact, I would have expected there to be a bit of a queue. He's in that prime Brazilian age, that 18 to 20 bracket, where they tend to go and make their move into Europe. And with Santos really struggling, both financially and having to force loads of youth players into their team, they would more than likely be willing to make a deal. They've had to offload a few players already. And Forrest could swoop in here and get themselves a bit of a bargain. And this is the way, this is the way that Forrest are looking to do their recruitment. Before what you would see is this secondary scouting system where players would go into, say, the Portuguese league or into the Russian league or the Ukrainian league or leagues like that. And what they would do then is be scouted once they've made that second tier up level into the bigger European leagues. And what Forrest are doing is a bit like you see with Brighton doing and a couple of other clubs. They're going directly to the source now to that Brazilian league. And there's another player from South America that we'll touch on in a second as well that Forrest are linked to. But this is what Forrest are doing. Now it comes with its risks because these are unproven talents and they're always hyped up. The Brazilians. Um, as in the clubs are always going to hype up these players because they are looking for finances off the back of it. But Leonardo does come with legit hype, but he will need chances created for him because he won't be able to play in a low block uh, per se. He's going to require the ball to be played into him in the box. Now, if, and let's just forget Taiwo for a second, and I mean that with all due respect, I'm kind of trying to build him in how he would work. Now, if you had, say, a Langer on the left, Jono on the right, MG Dub behind, a Danilo and a Sangare, oh my God, feeding the balls into him, creating chances where he's in the box, you are going to get a good return on your chances. He is prolific in front of goal. And I would be very, very interested in him coming to Nottingham Forest. But if we are going to play that low block football, if we are going to sit deep and require counterattacks, that's not really his style. Back in school, we used to call this kind of striker a goal hanger. And that's probably the best way to describe him. And if Forrest can play to his strengths, assuming, of course, we get him, he would be really good in the Premier League. Get your thoughts in on him down below if you've seen him play. Um, I know there's a lot of the Brazilian Forrest fan base that watch the channel. So let us know what you think about him. Do you agree with what I'm saying? Or are there little hidden other gems that he's got that we've missed out? Let me know. All right, guys. So there are other little stories going on. This talks about the Saudis getting a sniff at the forest. Talk of Serge Aurier potentially going. Um, other little ones, but nothing too concrete yet to bring you. So we will keep you posted on the rest of the stories as they break and develop. But the headline today, Hendo 
on his way, hopefully soon. And Sanchez, piss off, you're not wanted. If you haven't already, please don't forget to hit that like button. Subscribe to Forest Fan TV if you are new. And we will see you on the next video. Oh, in fact, we'll see you tonight, 7.30 for the watch long. Nearly forgot. Leeds United, the scum. We'll see you then. Come on, you Reds.